Hey, you guys, Scott Horton here to remind you that it's fun drive time at the Institute right now. We only do this twice a year, but it's got to be done. And I'm proud to do it, too. We've got an incredible crew of the best writers, authors, and podcasters in the libertarian movement. From Jim Bovard, Lori Calhoun, Tom Woods, and Ted Carpenter, to Keith Knight, Kyle Anzalone, Hunter Dorensis, Connor Freeman, and all the rest of the guys. It's the best team around. We've published three books this year. Keith Knight's Voluntarist Handbook, Lori Calhoun's Questioning the COVID Company Line, and Joseph Solis Mullins, The Fake China Threat. And here any day now, we will be publishing Thomas E. Wood's Diary of a Psychosis, Jim Bovard's Last Rites, and Keith Knight's latest, Domestic Imperialism. That makes 13 books so far, with more coming in the new year, including my new one, Provoked, How Washington Started the New Cold War with Russia and the Catastrophe in Ukraine, which, I know, is already overlong and overdue, but I'm working on it, I promise. And which brings me to the point, we don't have a big glass office building in downtown Washington. The money we raise goes straight to payroll and book production costs, and that's about it. The Libertarian Institute is the best bang for your buck in the movement. If you believe in what we're doing, please go to libertarianinstitute.org slash donate for details on how you can help keep us going into the new year and the great kickbacks we offer as well. And we thank you for your support. All right, y'all, welcome to the Scott Horton Show. I'm the director of the Libertarian Institute, editorial director of Antiwar.com, author of the book Fool's Aaron, Time to End the War in Afghanistan, and the brand new Enough Already, Time to End the War on Terrorism. And I've recorded more than 5,500 interviews since 2003, almost all on foreign policy and all available for you at scotthorton.org. You can sign up for the podcast feed there. And the full interview archive is also available at youtube.com slash Scott Horton Show. Hey guys, on the line, I've got Angela McArdle. She happens to be the chair of the National Libertarian Party of the United States of America. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me. Good. Uh, very happy to have you here. Merry Christmas and all that kind of stuff. Um, Merry Christmas to you. I have you on not to talk about party politics in case any IRS agents are listening to this nonprofit organization. Um, but you are, uh, which is not illegal, but you know, as to percentages and whatever the libertarian Institute and the libertarian party are only coincidentally named. They don't have anything to do with each other. That's the point, except that you have invited me and my managing editor, Keith Knight to give speeches in Washington, DC soon. Can you tell us about that, please? Absolutely. So last February, we had a big rally in Washington, D.C. at the Lincoln Memorial called Rage Against the War Machine, where we collaborated with people on the left to put together a big anti-war message and really unify behind the anti-war movement and try to reignite it, a left-right coalition, you know, spearheaded by minor parties and independents. And we have decided to come together and do it again. So we are having Rage Against the War Machine to defeat the deep state in Washington, D.C. at the Lincoln Memorial on February 17th. That's a Saturday. And I'm super stoked to be inviting you and, and Keith Knight there. We had a wonderful rally last year, but I did notice that we were we were a little bit lacking in libertarian voices. So I'm trying to bring more libertarians out so we, we can balance it Um and just, you know, send a really strong rebuke of the war machine and the deep state. Sounds good to me. And, you know, last year was such a success. And I think some uh, people on the Internet might have gotten a false impression of that based on a bunch of hype. But for anyone who was there, including the thousands of people in the crowd, it was a great success. And a lot of new people were won over and a lot of uh, great new networks of anti-war people, uh, you know, among libertarians as well as leftists and others who were there were established. And um, the whole thing was an absolutely fantastic success. Um, and so I can't wait to participate in the thing again. And I wonder, um, well, for example, how's it going on the invite so far? Is Are we going to top the big event last year, you think? I think we are. I mean, we've sent a lot of invites out. I don't have confirmation from everyone, but Ron Paul has been invited again. You know, we're inviting 
you know, many, if, if not all of the same speakers from last year, and we're trying to broaden it too and, and bring in more libertarians and maybe even a couple of principled anti-war conservative voices if, if we can find them. Um, you know, we're hoping for a bigger turnout this year. We had about 3,000 people. If we could get 5,000 in, in D.C., that would be phenomenal. But the, the more speakers we invite and the broader we make our coalition, the more successful it's going to be. Right. Um, yeah, that's true. And, you know, it'd be interesting to see whether we could get some good conservative anti-war leadership to show up as well. Yeah, um, we've, invited, we've invited Colonel Douglas McGregor. I have not I've not had a confirmation yet, but I just I want to put it out there that we are putting out the invites. You know, we we want people to feel welcome at this event. That's really what makes it successful is is when we bring a lot of strong voices and, you know, they attract their own audiences as well. I'm sure you I mean, you you probably feel it more than I do with with your work, but everything that's happening in Israel and Palestine right now, as miserable as it is, I do think it's a good opportunity to make people aware of, you know, why all of that stuff happens and, and why and how our government here in the United States enables it. And there are um, a lot more conservatives questioning things than I thought there would be. So I just think it's a great opportunity to do some outreach to them. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I was just having this conversation with Daniel Davis on his show about how Anthony Blinken and the Democrats, or that's the Secretary of State, and but the administration and their proxies in the media, they're actually officially hyping military industrial complex spending as one of the primary benefits of American foreign policy, specific, uh, specifically, I guess, when it comes to Ukraine. But they're saying this is a great investment in America's military industrial base and all of these things. The military industrial complex that Ike warned you about, the self-licking ice cream cone of the American military empire. Yeah, that's right. That's what it's all about, baby. We got to keep licking that ice cream cone, says the secretary of state, says Joe Biden, the least credible president since the last one and the one before that and the one before that. So, you know... You know, who the hell is he to lead anyone into war at this point on either side? It makes a perfect kind of, um, you know, avatar for the empire itself, President Biden does, you know? Yeah, so. it's just, it's completely nuts. It's like the mask has totally dropped. They're, they want to say things like war is good for the country. I can't imagine what it must be to hear that um, being someone who's like a veteran or if, you know, if you've had family killed overseas in some of these conflicts, it's, yeah. it's got to be the most insulting, like infuriating thing. And, and it's grossly out of touch to, you know, look at failing infrastructure here in the United States, inflation, and, and hear people say, yeah, let's spend money on war. You know, it'll be good for you. Suck it up. Yeah. Well, and especially with the homeless crisis, we've got hundreds of thousands of people. And some of yeah. them are just bums who like living outside and being bums. But a lot of people are just what they call the lowest rung on that economic ladder. And when it comes to inflationary times, priced right out on apartment. Yeah. yeah. You go from living in a, you know, a studio apartment to your car. And then it's just a, it's just a, a slippery, you know, downward decline when yeah. you're, when you're impacted by inflation by that, like that, you know, you're, you're one parking ticket away from homelessness is, is the way that I like to put it. You yeah. know, you pay your parking ticket or you pay your rent. Right. Uh, and then you, you know, you just start this cycle, this series of events, and then you're homeless and you get parking tickets and they impound your car or they put a boot on it, you know, and. Yeah. You and can't get to work. Yeah, yeah. You can't get to work. And the government just pumps money over and over. Yep. <laughs> to into foreign wars, it's got to be the most you know insulting slap in the face to yep. to working class Americans and people. And you know what? Yeah, and like you know what to to middle class and upper middle class and rich people too. I mean, this is the difference between uh, you know whether you're able to have a good Christmas for your family or not, or whether you're able yeah. to invest in a retirement account to take care of yourself and your old lady when you actually get old or, you know, um, medical care for your people or, uh, 
a nicer and safer place to live or, you know, whatever. Um, better food to eat instead of junk food wrapped in plastic or, you know, all of the things that sound like what to uh, like that's supposed to be selfish or something that the right. people of America want to have a decent standard of living and want to be able to maybe take their kids on vacation every couple of years or something, uh, do something for their family other than just, uh, you know, keep their nose to the grindstone, uh, you know, all year round just to survive. And, and then, as you say, just where they're right in their face, another hundred billion for this, another hundred billion for that. While the American people have to go without, while they inflate us right out of our homes and right out of our standard of living to give money to people that kill people overseas. Yeah, there's just, there's no excuse for it. Um, as awful as it is, though, I, I do think it's a good opportunity to wake up just the average American, people who are like they don't pay attention to politics right until they feel the pain of it personally or until they're just completely inundated uh, with it on social media and news. I think there are a lot of normies out there who are saying, like, I don't I don't understand what's going on, but I don't think it's a good idea. I think their interest is peaked and I want to reach out to them and. That's one of the reasons that we do it in Washington, D.C. People ask, oh, why do it there? You know, why do it in the swamp? You know, and well, first of all, it's a sharp rebuke to the, to the swamp. But also there are a lot of people who are just tourists who go, oh, let's go look out the Lincoln Memorial. Let's go see what uh, what's happening in Washington, D.C. Uh, you know, that's that's the place to go. Right. That's what we do. We go and look at where all the stuff happens for the for the country and. And I love that we can be there and just share a message with them and they can just wander into it and wander out, you know, with, with their minds blown and opened, hopefully. Yeah, absolutely right. Hey, y'all, I got a new coffee sponsor, Mundo's Artisan Coffee at mundosartisancoffee.com. When I wake up in the morning, I feel like my brain is all dried out. I need to pour a hot mug of rich, tasty coffee all over it to get it back working again, like 10W30 for the noggin. Though not necessary, it helps if the coffee tastes good. Well, Mundo's Artisan Coffee does taste good. They get the best beans from all around the world, and they don't burn them. Support the show and support your brain at MundosArtisanCoffee.com. Just click the link at the right margin at ScottHorton.org. Hey guys, I had some wasps in my house, so I shot them to death with my trusty Bug Assault 3.0 model with the improved salt reservoir and bar safety. I don't have a deal with them. But the show does earn a kickback every time you get a bug of salt or anything else you buy from Amazon.com by way of the link in the right-hand margin on the front page at scotthorton.org. So keep that in mind. And don't worry about the mess. Your wife will clean it up. Well, folks, sad to say, they lied us into war. All of them. World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Iraq War I, Serbia, Afghanistan, Iraq War II, Libya, Syria, Yemen all of them. But now you can get the ebook, All the War Lies, by me for free. Just sign up for the email list at the bottom of the page at scotthorton.org or go to scotthorton.org slash subscribe. Get All the War Lies by me for free. And then you'll never have to believe them again. And, um, and it is, it's such a great precedent set last year to see people who are not on the same page about all different issues but yep. who are able to prioritize opposition to the very worst thing our government is doing above all these other sectarian differences. And I yeah. know, you know, I'm sure there'll be critics of uh, last year, maybe that are listening to this, who say, oh, you know, you can't get commie cooties on you or whatever. But I say to you, well, Danny Sherson's a communist and we all love him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Are you kidding me? Um, yeah. I'll, we miss you, Danny, wherever you're at now. But, um, and he's not really a communist, but he's a leftist, you know what I mean? And, yep. But he fought in Iraq War II and Afghanistan, and he wrote 10,000 articles about American foreign policy. And, you know, he also wrote his own kind of Howard Zinn-like history of America as well. And so nobody's perfect, man. But here's a guy yep. who's the MVP of anti-war people of our generation, right? One of the most productive anti-war writers of our time. And based on his personal experience leading guys 
in those fights over there in Iraq War II and Afghanistan. And so that's just one example. Or look at Cindy Sheehan. You know, I subscribe to her Substack, mm -hmm. and and she still is plugging away. Every day she puts out stuff. She hadn't cut one iota of slack for Barack Obama or any of the Democrats this entire time. People say, where's the anti-war left? Cindy Sheehan ain't quit complaining out loud and typing with them fingers of hers this entire time. Same thing for Code Pink. You know, sometimes people go, oh, well, you know, these ladies doing their stunts uh, with their uh, paint on their hands. or whatever. Some of those stunts are really heroic. Sometimes they really confront powerful people with deadly, horrible truths and in a way that God bless them for doing it. That You have to appreciate the work that Medea Benjamin and her best yep. people have put in this whole time. And, and that goes for look at the viewpoints at antiwar.com, too probably two thirds of them are leftists and liberals who write all the best anti-war stuff in the country. Well, good. Thank God for them yeah. too. What would we do without them? You know, we'd Medea be had completely a great, sunk. Um, she had a great moment approaching Marco Rubio recently about the, the death of Palestinian children. And he just, you know, shrugged it off and said, I blame Hamas and thought that he had some gotcha moment. And it was just the most embarrassing like worst moment I thought for him PR wise that he just said, you know, he acknowledged that everybody was, was, uh, was dying over there and said that it's not my problem. I don't care if Palestinian children are dead. I just blame Hamas. It's their fault. It's just totally wild. Yeah. They're disgusting. And you know, more and more, I mean, I don't, I'm sure you saw the polls where half of Republicans want a ceasefire and they yeah. still favor Israel. They still want to continue to arm and protect Israel. Um, but they don't want to see this continue here. I thought yeah. it was very apt when Daryl Cooper, martyr made on Twitter the other day, compared this to, or in fact, compared the apologists for this policy to the people who rationalized the My Lai massacre. That, of course, everybody said then too, oh yeah, that's war, this, that, the other thing. But no, it ain't either. That's not what you're supposed to do, throw grenades into houses where you know there's women yep. and children there rape and murder women and children throw their bodies in a ditch that is not that's what you do if you're the gestapo that's not what you're supposed to do if you're the u.s army infantry and what the israelis are doing in gaza right now is as you know really great israeli journalism has absolutely demonstrated they are deliberately targeting and killing innocent civilians including children and a, america a is a party to it they, they want to demoralize. They want to decimate the population. They want to just make it so that no one's left to, to fight back or negotiate with. Um, you know, I'm not involved in it and I'm still horrified, like embarrassed on behalf of my country that we've that we're just kind of turning our heads, you know. And, yeah. and by the way, you know. Look, I, I don't know if you uh, were on that Twitter space thing that I did or if you heard that where. You know, they had me on to, I think the guy's question, I forgot who it was that was hosting it. The first question was like, so tell us the entire history of all of this. And so I kind of refused. And instead I said, my first answer was that I personally, my own personal opinion is that my own personal opinion should not be the doctrine of the Libertarian Party on this. And that I have, you know, a lot to say about it. I think for the Libertarian mm -hmm. Party, what's most important is strict non-interventionism. On the other hand, I think it's very admirable the way you and the Twitter account and I presume Instagram and whatever representing the LP have been so good on this issue and talking about it. And I would ask the audience to consider for a moment what it would be like if the old regime of the LP was still in charge. When we yeah. can see how the classical liberal caucus and these people are, They've been pro-Ukraine war and pro-Israel in their slaughter in Gaza this whole time. So not only would they not be good on it, they would be absolutely horrible on it and speaking in the name of the Libertarian Party and therefore in the eyes of the broader political culture in the name of our movement. And I got to say that I think that out in the broader Libertarian movement, there is still this leftover resentment of the party left over from back when it was under the control of those guys. 
And yep. we need to not have that. And what the hell, I'll go ahead and say, everybody's a bit disappointed that Dave ain't running. But still, we absolutely have to make the most of the fact that the party belongs to the libertarian movement now. That that weird kind of cousins who never met each other thing, relationship between our party and our movement that we've had over the last 25 years or so, or longer, whatever, is over. And that with the libertarian movement consensus is is the way the libertarian party thinks and speaks and that to me is one of the most important political inventions of my lifetime that this mises caucus takeover narrowly defined but also much more broadly defined the libertarian movement's merger with the libertarian party as represented by that mises caucus takeover is just absolutely huge and for everyone who was a part of it you know don't uh, lose sight of how important your achievement was and is and has been and must continue to be. I mean, imagine if people who denounced Ron Paul for being pro-Russia, supposedly, were still speaking for the Libertarian Party during these wars that we have going on right now, the Biden era wars. There is nothing more important than making sure that Mises Caucus folk show up at their conventions and show up, you know, at the state conventions and at the national convention and keep the momentum going and and just forget. I think about it, really. Whatever problems you have with the LP are from before, right? That's that's what we're uh, working together to prevent from coming back. And not that I think there's much of a risk of it. What the hell do I know? I doubt it because, um, you know, clearly the LP now is sounding the right tune on all of this stuff and that's what's most important. Yeah, man, I'm going to try really hard to hold on to it. I I am running again. It's, you know, like this is, I don't think that it was as much of a, you know, watershed moment as, as COVID, but this is a huge moment and it takes a lot of courage to stand up and say, no, we shouldn't be involved in war. We're, we are anti-war. And not everybody makes that litmus test, unfortunately, you know, but but that's why we're here. We're going to keep doing it. We're going to keep opposing war. We're going to work with other people that oppose war. And, you know, one of the things that I was, you know, people were critical of me for was they thought, oh, you know, here comes Angela McArdle and the Mises Caucus. They're just a bunch of alt-right sympathizers. They don't reach out to the left. They don't care about, you know, working with anybody outside of their tiny little niche base. You know, but here I am hosting a rally with Garland Nixon and Gerald Salente and Jose Vega and Craig Pasta Jarjula. You know, we're we're making it happen because because the principles of libertarianism are, are what are important. Yeah. And that's what we're going to support. Absolutely. OK, so tell us which website do we go to to uh, find out all about this thing? Because I got to go. Absolutely. Go to defeatthedeepstate.org. Click that little uh, button and scroll down and click donate, please. We are trying to raise a, a nice little pile of cash here to rebuild the stage, the sound system, all of that. This is a passion project. You know, we're all volunteers right now, but we've got to we've got to get this thing funded so that we can make it happen on February 17th. You can see our list of demands. You can see all of our awesome speakers as well, as well defeatthedeepstate.org. Okay, thank you so much for your time, Angela McArdle. You're great. Thank you. The Scott Horton Show, Anti-War Radio, can be heard on KPFK 90.7 FM in LA, APSradio.com, Antiwar.com, ScottHorton.org, and LibertarianInstitute.org.